sometimes controversial, always politically incorrect, and pro-life without exception, without compromise, and without apology. It's the Pro-Life America podcast with your hosts, Sarah Waits and the president of Life Dynamics, Mark Crutcher. Hey everyone, welcome to the Pro-Life America podcast. This is Sheila Crutcher, Mark Crutcher's daughter, and across the table from me is Sarah Waits. Hello everyone. Your podcast host. I We're co-hosts, yes, we share it. Yes, we wanted to switch things up, that's why <laughs> I introduced us first. Plus I she says that I do a voice. I don't know what yeah. she's talking about, but she claims I do a voice, so. Mm-hmm. Yes, an uh, introduction <laughs> voice or whatever, so we decided to mix things up there in the intro. So today's topic is something that we have seen personally because Mm -hmm. of the role that Life Dynamics plays in the pro-life movement. Mm -hmm. We have done a lot of interacting with clinic workers. And so this is something that we've seen. But the pro-choice side is real cautious about not airing their dirty laundry. Right. And like Sarah said, we've seen this because of are exposing of the abortion industry and, you know, our role in that. And our dealings with abortion industry insiders. Mm -hmm. So the thing that we're talking about today is the animosity and almost a power struggle Mm -hmm. between Planned Parenthood and the independent abortion clinics, Mm -hmm. which if you take all this out and you think of it less as a women's rights movement and you think of it as a business makes absolutely perfect sense oh it does i mean you know they all claim to get along it's all about you know women's health and women's rights and choices Mm -hmm. but no at the end of the day it's a business and there's competition and there is animosity that they have Mm -hmm. towards one another but they try not to let the public know about I think the driving force of why that's changing a little bit is I have noticed independent clinic operators going in interviews and talking about how Planned Parenthood is treating the abortion issue almost too much like a business. And Mm -hmm. they're not, they say that they're not taking enough risks. Well, it's corporate, you know, like Mm -hmm. you have these small independent and then you have this big Planned Parenthood Corporation. What we were saying when we were talking about treating it like too much like a business is, for example, not opening it in some more rural areas Mm -hmm. because Planned Parenthood doesn't feel like there's enough of a market. And to some degree, they've been criticizing them on their response over chemical abortions. Although, as we've discussed, we think they have a game plan on that Mm -hmm. that these clinics are maybe not aware of or they just don't. Mm-hmm. give a lot of credence to and we put the link in the description about that so you can go listen to that episode right. but so the article that got all of this started is a article from the guardian titled mm-hmm. why an independent abortion clinic is suing planned parenthood right and the long and short of it is park med nyc an independent abortion clinic in manhattan mm-hmm. has filed a lawsuit in october of last year claiming that Planned Parenthood poached one of its doctors Mm -hmm. and because of this left the clinic unable to meet patient needs and basically in financial straits because of that. And I'll go into this more in just a second. But a couple important things to note here is that the Planned Parenthood in question is just about two miles away. Right, two miles away. And the independent abortion clinic has been there for a long time. I mean, weren't they open before Roe versus Wade? I did not write that down in my notes, but I think it mentioned something like that, that they were open. That they've been basically open from the beginning. From the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this on the show before, and we've talked about this throughout our history at Life Dynamics. There's always been a struggle Mm -hmm. for the abortion industry to recruit doctors. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with the very nature and gore of abortion and the fact the medical community Mm -hmm. firmly knows because they've seen it firsthand that the abortion industry is the washouts and losers Mm -hmm. of medicine. That's where you go when you failed everywhere else Mm -hmm. in the medical community. That's what my dad would always say, the washouts and the Mm -hmm. losers and that's what they are yeah when you start poking around into the medical histories and the malpractice Mm -hmm. histories of these doctors that's exactly what you found in fact Mm -hmm. we have quotes in our book access from people in the abortion industry saying the exact same thing like you can't look too hard at these people because you'll find shady stuff and then you're Mm -hmm. then you're left with a moral qualm of 
okay, well, do we hire them knowing what we know about them? Mm -hmm. Or do we just not have an abortion doctor? Mm -hmm. And they've never been able to get the replacement rates up to what they need because the burnout is so high. Well, and they have a hard time recruiting new medical professionals as well. Like they try to bring in students and Mm -hmm. try to get them to perform abortions during their OBGYN residencies. And a bunch of people don't want to. We've even seen struggles between students and professors Mm -hmm. of these medical programs where the medical program is trying to push abortion Mm -hmm. training and this medical students are like we don't want this we don't want to do this we don't be associated with it nothing there are some professors in universities that have talked about making it a requirement and Mm -hmm. these students are like no and we talked not too terribly long ago about some stuff that was going on in California, and California is really trying to help ramp up with the training of mm-hmm. new abortion doctors. But the problem is that they can't get enough people to replace the people who are burnt out mm-hmm. and retiring. Right. So in the case of this clinic here, mm-hmm. in the summer of 2021, they hired a doctor who was right out of her fellowship. Mm-hmm. One of the few that would do it. <laughs> One of the few who would do it. So they were taking her and training her in abortion, specifically in second trimester abortions. Mm -hmm. The doctor's one-year contract included a non-compete clause, which apparently is pretty common within the medical industry. Mm -hmm. And it specifically barred her from working at a nearby abortion provider for 12 months after leaving Park Mm -hmm. Med. In March of 2022, she extended her contract with Park Med for three years, but just two months later... She advised them that she would be resigning to go work for Planned Parenthood beginning in August. According to the administrator of the clinic, when she resigned, she was the only one performing second trimester abortions at the clinic. Mm -hmm. And so the lawsuit accuses Planned Parenthood of inducing her to breach her non-compete agreement, despite knowing the terms of her contract. So it sounds like either, you know, they poached her because she's the competition and or She used her uh, renewal of her contract with Mm -hmm. that independent clinic to leverage a position at Planned Parenthood for more money, probably. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but my impression that I have read from non-competes is that depending on the state and the area in which the non-compete is, it's harder to enforce. You have to prove that you leaving Mm -hmm. and going to a competing business impacts the place that you left Mm -hmm. from. In this case, I would say that that clinic has a full legitimate Mm -hmm. argument. But I mean, there's no doubt about the fact that Planned Parenthood does try to monopolize Mm -hmm. the abortion industry. Well, I thought it was really interesting. The administrator for the clinic said he was hesitant to speak out publicly against Planned Parenthood for fear of causing division, but two, concern over possible retaliation. Mm -hmm. He said that already the clinic has noticed a decrease in patient referrals from Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no question about it. As much as they try to hide it, independent clinics don't like Planned Parenthood because Planned Parenthood gets the majority of the abortion funding. They get the attention. mm -hmm. But there's something else that I think that goes along with it. And I believe your dad covered it a little bit in line five. And that is that Planned Parenthood kind of posits themselves as the champions Mm -hmm. of women's health and abortion. And everybody else is kind of bottom tier. Like the rookies. Yeah. Not not as like the professional. Like they are the abortion provider Mm -hmm. and everybody else is, you know, it doesn't come with the prestige. Sheila, you've got numbers Mm -hmm. showing independent clinics versus Planned Mm -hmm. Parenthood. So what is the breakdown? Well, so this is from the Abortion Care Network. And this shows the division between independent clinics versus Planned Parenthood Mm -hmm. and kind of their dislike and hatred towards Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Because in a report called Communities Need Clinics, independent clinics leading the fight to sustain abortion access in the United States. Mm -hmm. This is from 2021 that claims that although independent clinics represent about 25% of clinics offering abortions in the United States, they provide 58% of all abortion procedures nationwide. Mm -hmm. And so Abortion Care Network is like, hey, you know, even though we only represent a small amount, we do the majority of the abortions. I mean, they're really, really, really trying to... Drive that home. Drive that home and say, hey, we're the ones who do the heavy lifting on abortion. We need support. I found a 
Ms. Magazine article along the same mm-hmm. lines who said the same thing. But when I was doing research for this, one thing that I found, and one thing I'm sure most people who listen to this podcast know, not every Planned Parenthood provides abortions. Mm -hmm. Now, in more recent years, Planned Parenthood has done a push trying to encourage and require more and more of their Mm -hmm. clinics to provide abortion to some degree, and especially now that Roe is overturned, it kind of depends on the state, but... There's been this push to drive up abortion in each and every single clinic. Mm -hmm. And so when you see a Planned Parenthood clinic in a community, they may or may not do abortions. Right. Or they may just do a medication abortion. Mm -hmm. They may do medication and not... Referrals. Yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah. But this report also emphasized and call out Planned Parenthood saying that Oh, they only offer about 37% of the abortions. Like, they're this big corporation, big yeah. organization, but they only do about 37%. I also want to say, though, that in the report that the Abortion Care Network says that they offer more comprehensive care. That's mm-hmm. what they call it. Yeah. Medication abortion versus in clinic. So they want to say, oh, you know, we're smaller, but we provide more abortions and we provide more comprehensive care. So they're really trying to, you know, say, hey, this is why we're better than Planned Parenthood. It's funny that you mentioned that because there was this discussion about why Planned Parenthood focuses on medication Mm -hmm. or why they don't do later term abortions Mm -hmm. at a number of the Planned Parenthoods. And this independent abortion clinic person who, who works there made this point, and it was something I never would have thought about. And they said, look, anytime you're talking about a later term abortion, mm-hmm. there's more potential for complications. Right. But you also have to have an RN, mm-hmm. a sonographer, somebody who's doing sonograms, right? And they go over all these different things that you have to have. You have to have the staff for that. Right. And so for Planned Parenthood and all these other places, if you're dealing with a shortage of people Mm -hmm. who want to work in this, medication abortion is just doling out a few pills. Right. And it's about their bottom line. Mm -hmm. They're in it to make money. They don't have to have those people Mm -hmm. on staff. So they make more money just by pushing medication abortion. Mm -hmm. So the other big article that I found about this actually came out in just May of this year. And it's called The Problem with Planned Parenthood. And it's by The New Yorker. Can you imagine an article by The New Yorker saying The Problem with Planned Parenthood? Yeah, because, I mean, the mass media is Planned Parenthood is their golden child. Yeah, exactly. Planned Parenthood in their eyes can do no wrong. So, If you read the article, there was definitely pushing of a message and agenda. They're always Mm -hmm. talking about the pro-lifers and how violent and extreme and dangerous that they are. But if you take all of that out and you get to really the meat of this article, there are some very interesting things here. In the article, Peg Johnston, the former executive director of Southern Tier Women's Health Services, spoke about how in 2012, a Planned Parenthood health center just 10 miles from her facility was looking to do abortions. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing this was a clinic that had already been open but never was doing abortions. Deborah Marcus, the then CEO of Planned Parenthood of South Central New York, which is one of their Mm -hmm. regions, requested a waiver for the abortion provision requirement from the national office Mm -hmm. because they did not want to compete with that clinic because the clinic, like the deal of Park Med NYC, had been there for a long time, offered Mm -hmm. a lot of comprehensive services, and they didn't want to compete with them. Right. The response from corporate, if you will, denied the waiver. Mm -hmm. So they were like, no, you have to do abortions. In the article, it was revealed that Marcus was not surprised because they had spoken to peers at other Planned Parenthood affiliates who'd wanted to avoid encroaching on clinics in their communities. And a number of them had asked for waivers and all of their requests had been denied. Mm -hmm. So this was a pattern that people within Planned Parenthood had seen. Oh, yeah. They, you know, see an abortion clinic. They probably analyze how many people get abortions and, Mm -hmm. you know. They do their research, and then if they think that they can make money off of it, they swoop in. And mm-hmm. Another thing that I saw in there that was interesting, there was a memoir by Susan Wickland about her career as an abortion provider. And in her memoir, she revealed how when she decided she would open a clinic in Livingston, which is a small town in southwestern Montana, after Planned Parenthood higher-ups rebuffed the idea, Stacy Cross, the then CEO of Planned Parenthood of Montana, said that she would, quote, do everything possible to shut it down because that would take patients away from Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Cross, who now presides over a Planned Parenthood affiliate in California, has claimed that, quote, the assertion that we would try to shut down her is patently false, unquote. <laughs> However, there were witnesses to this disagreement, mm -hmm. and there was a donor who witnessed this and told Cross that she would never give the organization another dime over this. Mm -hmm. Now, that person is since deceased, but a friend of hers has confirmed the account. So... Another case of mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood saying, well, we're not going to open a clinic in that area because we don't feel like it's worth our time. Mm -hmm. But if you open a clinic, mm -hmm. we're going to shut it down because you're competing with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for some of those who have been in the pro-life movement for longer, you may recognize the name Julie Burkhart. For those who don't know, she worked with Tiller at his mm -hmm. abortion clinic, and she actually reopened Tiller's clinic. A few years after she opened the clinic, she learned that Planned Parenthood had started offering abortion services at its health center in the city. Mm -hmm. So Planned Parenthood then turned around and said, oh, we got a market here. Right. She said that nobody from Planned Parenthood had consulted her or met with her, nothing. Mm -hmm. She also opened a clinic in Oklahoma City. And not long after she opened, the same thing happened there. Mm -hmm. So Planned Parenthood is letting these independent uh, abortion providers do the grunt work. Test the market, uh -huh. so to say. And then, so to say, they, yeah. and then they're like, okay, well. If let's... there's a market mm -hmm. there, yeah. And she has more recently opened one in Casper, Wyoming. And she has revealed in this article that if it's successful, she's afraid that Planned Parenthood might say that there's a viable market there mm -hmm. and do the same thing there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it is extremely rare that you hear people in the industry come mm -hmm. out and say this because they've been notoriously tight-lipped. But I think the page finally has turned on that when you see in one of these articles a quote from an abortionist named Kathleen Morrison stating, Planned Parenthood has no compunction about trying to squash independent providers, mm -hmm. unquote. I don't think it gets any more... Mm -mm. And I mean, Blunt than that. my dad saw this writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, from the mouth of Mark this week mm -hmm. is from his book, Siege, a pro-life field manual. And if you have not read the book, mm -hmm. you really should. It talks right. about where this battle is headed. Mm -hmm. And we will have the link for that in the description. It's just $12 free shipping. Mm -hmm. You should really read it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it says, for many years, it has been widely known within the abortion industry that Planned Parenthood has been trying to squeeze out the independent operators and become America's exclusive provider of abortions. However, toward the end of the Bush 43 administration, events began to unfold to suggest that Planned Parenthood may actually be thinking in much bigger terms than that. And if you want to find out what those bigger terms are, I suggest you get Siege and read it. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> but like I said, he saw, the, yeah. he saw, you know, the writing on the wall. And now more people may actually start to see the infighting and stuff within the abortion industry. Well, in that book also details something that people need to know that's going on. And there's a real animosity between the doers mm -hmm. as we call them which is the people who are actually working in the abortion clinic mm -hmm. so that's doing helping do the abortions. helping provide the abortions mm -hmm. and what are called the talkers which are the politicians and the lobbyists lobbyists and the media planned parenthood speaking heads uh -huh. or like who are pushing mm -hmm. pushing this idea of abortion that doesn't match up the with CEOs, the reality the mm -hmm. marketers the business people yeah and each group has disdain with each mm -hmm. other for different reasons right mm -hmm. and if you haven't heard about that i think that's something that's going to be more important as time goes on mm -hmm. and that's also in siege as well but we've also talked about it on our podcast and right. i'll put the link in the description so maybe if you listen to that episode you'll want to go read siege <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely should so. yes a lot of good information well if you think we're wrong or crazy about this issue i want you to go to the link in our description with to the episode on our website let us know what you think in the comments and if you like the episode, be sure to subscribe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and the list goes well, on. Well, just face it. They have some homework to do, Sarah. Just <laughs> do several things. <laughs> <laughs> well, my point is follow the podcast, then go by Siege, and you've already accomplished so much. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> well, read it. Don't just buy it. Read it. <laughs> yes. Well, I naturally, that was my yeah. thought. You know, I guess you could use it for a, a coffee table book if you wish, yeah. but go read it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess that's it. Life that's all we have. Mm-hmm. Life Dynamics is not here to put up a good fight. Mm-mm, we're here to win. Because winning is how the killing stops. We'll see you next week, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.